welcome to my youtube channel so in this particular video we will start new topic that is about the correlation coefficient i am not sure that how many students are already aware about this concept which is quite really important in terms of you know doing any project with respect to machine learning or deep learning or basically whenever we want to see the features which are given to us in our data we need to for sure determine that whether these features are highly correlated or not why and how does that impact today i'll talk about that only so let's get started the very first point is what this correlation coefficient is for right so as you can clearly see on the screen that this measure the strength of a relationship between two quantitative variables so if suppose i will be having given given a data set i will be having 10 features and i need to determine that all these two different different features if i'll pick up the permutations and combinations of all of them what is the strength of their relationship how good or how highly correlated they are again it's a unit free measure it doesn't have any as such unit and the value after doing the calculation part you will see that lies between minus 1 to plus 1 now for sure after after seeing the last point where i am saying that the value lies between minus 1 and plus 1 you must have one question in your head that how basically we can evaluate this correlation coefficient so let's talk about that as well so as you can clearly see this is the way this is the formula i will say to calculate the correlation coefficient again here if you will see in the numerator part i am just taking two variables one is x and one is y and x bar and y bar indicates the mean mean of that particular sample and what i am doing i am subtracting the value with the mean for individual sample divided by i am doing a square root of x i minus x bar square and y i minus y bar square so here x i and y i as i am saying is a variable sample because what i told you that i want to determine that how much two variables are correlated with each other either they are highly correlated or they are not at all correlated or they are negatively correlated positive or negative i'll talk about that as well that what is the meaning of positive correlation and what is the meaning of a negative correlation wait for a moment but yeah this is the way where we do the calculation we find out the mean value and then we calculate what is the value of this r now moving ahead the question is as i told you that the value lies from plus 1 to minus 1 it means that you either have a positive correlation value maybe near to plus 1 or you can have a negative correlation value maybe near to minus 1 what is the indication of that whenever i am saying that the correlation value is correlation coefficient value is positive it means that two variables are positively associated what is the meaning of that simple meaning is just observe that please listen to me very much carefully if suppose i will be having one x variable and one y variable and i am saying to you that the two variables are highly positively correlated it simply indicates that if suppose the value of x is increasing the value of y will also increase okay means directly proportional in other sense if you will understand that sense as well what i am saying if one variable is increasing another variable is also increasing that is the meaning of a positive correlation what about negative correlation it simply indicates that suppose if i am saying x is increasing then y automatically starts decreasing means there is a negatively correlation here positive and negative positive means if one variable is increasing another will start decreasing negative means sorry positive means if one is increasing second one second one variable is also increasing negative means if one is increasing second one is decreasing negative name suggests right so always observe you will observe this that when the value of this coefficient is very close to either plus 1 or minus 1 means either it is highly positive correlated or it is highly negative correlated you will observe that the points in the scatter plot will lie close to a straight line okay this is again one of the most important fact i can show you right 
here you can see in the in the graph the very first chart which you can clearly observe is a strong positively correlated if i just try to draw a line it will be like a straight line now here you can see right if suppose on x axis i will be having x variables value on y axis i will be having a y variables value so what i am observing here that as i am moving forward as the value of x is increasing the value of y is also increasing can you see strong and negative here what is happening as the value of x is increasing the value of y starts decreasing weak and positive means yeah we can see that overall trend is that when uh, when the value of x is increasing the value of y is also increasing but not in that much straight fashion there is not as such straight line which is coming up here and no correlation means when the value is equals to 0 means at that point of time i can't see a trend that okay i can't can't say judgment that when the x is increasing y is increasing or when the x is increasing y is decreasing they, they are not correlated at all perfect so this is the idea behind the correlation coefficient which i want to give you here but now you can ask me one question that priya why you are talking about all these stuffs where it is helping us in data science projects see in data science projects you will deal with the data for sure now i will show you some practical demonstration of the same okay what i will do here is that uh, i'll try to take the same file diabetes data do you remember i started with this point only by taking this this data set only in the stats part when i was talking about the descriptive uh, st statistics here you can observe what i will do first of all i'll try to show you the correlation coefficient with respect to each and every feature and then i will try to talk about the inference for the same if you observe here we are importing all the required libraries we are running the data after that this is the head part description part of data checking the null values checking the box plot this these things i already have discussed so i am not explaining any of their any of them this is where i want to check the correlation values with respect to each and every feature so there is by default function called as core which is basically giving me a correlation factor suppose i want to generate a proper heat map of that so this is what you can do by calling this sns dot heat map i hope my screen is visible to everyone so here what we are saying we are calling this sns dot heat map inside that i am calling the same function which is data dot core and i am saying annotation is equals to true because i want this x and y to be annotated and then i am uh, passing the plot dot show function to plot here itself now here if you will clearly observe here if you will clearly observe i hope you can see the numbers as well with respect to pregnancies and outcome what is the value it's 0.22 with respect to pregnancies and age it is 0.54 can you see any feature any number which is having value maybe greater than 0.95 or 0.90 i can't see that it means i can see negative values i can see positive values but i can't see a very high correlated number it just the diagonal elements are one why because obviously the pregnancies and pregnancies feature highly correlated value is plus 1 glucose and glucose plus 1 so you will observe at every point of time whenever you will make a heat map this is by the way initial task only where you need to check that is there any feature present inside my data which is highly correlated why is that so why i am i am saying that this is very important see when i am saying that two features are highly correlated meaning either the value is maybe greater than 0.95 like 0.98 is the value or minus 0.98 is is the value the simple indication is that that they are providing the similar kind of information in that scenario they are providing the similar information in that scenario for the models prediction so why to pass all the features why to pass all the features so in a way here what i am doing i am selecting the features so there is a this is something which is a part of a feature selection technique which i am talking about here so basically what i want to say here is that suppose i am providing you let me just have my pen suppose what i am saying here that suppose i am providing you in a diabetes data suppose consider that we will be having 10 features which is feature f1 
feature f2 feature f3 until the value of feature f10 and after that i am having one target value which is outcome which indicates either the answer is 0 or the answer is 1 right so either a person is diabetic or the person is not diabetic this is something which i am having inside my diabetic data diabetes data data set which we are dealing with as of now now here you can clearly observe that maybe it's an it's my assumption again i don't know that whether we will be having actually 10 features or not but consider assume that i'm having 10 features and on the basis of those 10 features only i will be able to clearly say that or my model will be able to clearly say that whether a person is diabetic or not now suppose you you prepared one heat map which is talking about this correlation coefficient value and you get you got that the feature f1 and f2 feature f1 and f2 is having a correlation value of maybe 0 0.99 something like this this is something which you are getting as a value of a correlation coefficient okay this is something which you are getting again consider the scenario okay just for the explanation i am saying now in this case this indicates that both the features are passing a similar kind of a information they both are passing the similar kind of a information which basically helps the model similar information i would say to the model which basically helps the model to give the prediction prediction of what prediction of a target column means whether a person is diabetic or the person is not diabetic so the question is that if they are providing the similar information only then why to pass both of them so usually what happened is that in that scenario we will delete one feature or we will not consider one feature maybe i'll pass only f1 or only f2 and just avoid passing the feature f uh, uh, f2 if i am passing f1 in this way basically what i am helping out i am helping my model to not get confused i am helping my model to train faster and this is something a technique of which we called which i am talking about is a feature selection technique as well this is how basically this is one of the technique i would say not only this is the only technique i would say this is the one of the technique to select which features are really important for the prediction of the outcome value which is either 0 or 1 right this is something which i want to talk about in this particular session and i hope that i'm giving sense to everyone now if someone will ask you about the correlation coefficient i think you can clearly explain what is the meaning of correlation coefficient what's the inference of that why it is important to have this parameter as the eds step, it, step itself right how basically we can calculate this value what is the range of this value and what is the meaning when i am saying if a value is negative what is the meaning of that if i am saying that the value is positive what is the meaning of that if i am saying the value is zero what is the meaning of that i hope everything is pretty much clear to everyone with its implementation part as well if you still have any sort of doubt what you need to do you need to just comment it out in the below section even if you understood the concept please do comment it out so that i will get to know that how many students are able to understand the concept pretty well it will really help me and motivate me to create such type of more videos right and uh, i am seeing that many of the students are not subscribing to my channel please hit like button subscribe to my channel because it will really help me to reach to more audience which is actually required right so without your support it is not feasible for me to move ahead in this particular uh, youtube space so it will be really helpful for me please do it okay and bye bye everyone i will see you all in my next upcoming video i hope that you found find this video very insightful and with this keep learning keep exploring and happy learning to all bye bye